Ever wonder why some dashboards just click while others leave you confused? It's not just about looks, it's how our brains are wired. Our brains process visuals 60,000 times faster than text. That means while someone is still reading a table full of numbers, another person has already made a decision from a well-designed chart. I'll break down the psychology of data visualization. And to bring the concepts to life, I'll walk through a real example in Tableau where every improvement ties back to a key psychology principle. Because visuals aren't just decorative, they're how our brains make sense of information. Over 90% of the information our brains process is visual. And we can recognize images in just 13 milliseconds, which is faster than a blink. That's why we remember logos, memes, and symbols better than paragraphs of text. This is the picture superiority effect, where we're wired to retain images far better than words alone. Our brains remember 65% of visuals three days later, but only 10% of text. So if your dashboard's just numbers, people are gonna forget most of it. Pre-attentive attributes like color, shape, and size grab our attention instantly. That's why red alerts feel urgent, unique shapes stand out immediately, and large objects demand focus. So if you want your dashboard to be clear, fast, and actually useful, you need to design it for how the brain works. A great chart lets your audience understand the data instantly. I have a video explaining which charts to use in different scenarios, and a site that has links to videos on how to build them. But instead of just theory, I'm gonna show step-by-step -step how to take a poorly designed dashboard and transform it into a great one. And with every change, I'll explain the psychology behind why it works better. I don't follow every rule myself, but from a psychology perspective, these changes can seriously improve your dashboard design. Right off the bat, this dashboard looks overcrowded and there's no white space. And we're not even using all the real estate on the screen. So first I'm gonna change the size of the dashboard so that it fills the entire screen. Then I'll move the elements so they're smaller and not as close together, which makes it easier for our brains to process the grouping. The Gestalt principles, specifically proximity, tells us that elements that are too close together feel cluttered, and white space reduces the cognitive load, making it easier to focus on what matters. The next thing I notice is that this pie chart is overloaded. Pie charts are already hard to compare because the brain has a hard time judging angular differences, especially when there are too many slices. So I'm gonna to go to the sales by subcategory worksheet, click on show me, and choose a bar chart instead. Bar charts leverage length, which the brain can process instantly, making comparisons much easier. This bar chart is also sorted by alphabetical order, but the alphabetical order isn't meaningful in most datasets, and it's forcing users to scan all the bars to find trends. Instead, I'm gonna sort these by highest to lowest sales, because our brains naturally seek patterns and follow visual hierarchies. So now we can see the biggest and smallest values instantly without extra effort. And we didn't need to waste space with a legend. Working memory also has its limits. And a long table like this forces scanning and scrolling, which makes it harder to see the key takeaways. We have the grand totals at the bottom, which is the most important part of this table. So instead, I'm going to transform this table into some KPI cards that give us the important numbers without having to look. All I need to do on the worksheet is right click on the order ID field to remove it. So now instead of our table being at the order ID level, we have it at the total level. This KPI card now prioritizes the essential information, which reduces the mental strain of scanning large tables. Psychology also tells us that too many colors creates noise, which makes it hard to find meaning in the data. The sales trend bar chart uses way too many colors to tell us which bars have high or low sales. And you can see when I go to the sales trend worksheet, that's because it's coloring the bars based on the sum of sales. But instead, I'm gonna create a calculative field to categorize the bars based on the amount of sales. All I need to do is type if the sum of sales is greater than 250,000, then output the text green. And if the sum of sales is less than 100,000, output the text red. If it doesn't fall in either of those buckets, then output the text yellow. I'll move this to the marks card and make it a color instead. Now we have three distinct colors to categorize these bars. And I can use the legend to edit these colors so that green is a green color, red is a red color, and yellow is a yellow color. And if these are too vibrant, you can use color within the marks to decrease the opacity. 
Now these bars align with stoplight colors, which leverages color psychology, where red is seen as urgent or bad, yellow is like caution or moderate, and green is associated with good or positive. So this not only simplifies the coloring guide, but it also makes the colors more intuitive. We also want to avoid visual overload by not cramming in so many intersecting lines. This creates visual clutter, making it hard to identify trends. To make it so that the brain doesn't have to track as many lines at the same time, I'll drag the category field that's creating all these lines to the filters. Adding a filter or splitting this visual into multiple charts makes it easier to see trends because there's only one line a user has to track. And with the filter option, we can see one category, multiple categories, or all categories. So we're not removing any data from the visual, just making it easier to extract insights. And the last thing isn't about the visuals themselves, but their formatting. Formatting can go a long way in how easy the dashboard is to read and how much information we retain. There's some redundancy within this dashboard. For example, we know this is sales by subcategory based on the title. So I can hide the field label for subcategory and I can remove the access title for sales. Same thing with the sales trend. We don't need the order date field label and we don't need the sales access title. For profit by category, I'll also remove the access title. Now that we've removed redundancies, I'm also going to format the label for sales trend so that it's an abbreviation and the text doesn't get cut off. Then I'm going to rearrange these so that they're prioritized, making it easier to find what you need without searching around. KPIs are the most important, so I'm going to move them to the top left. Then I'll move the sales by subcategory down and put the profit by category above. And the sales trend can go under a KPIs. And I'm making sure to leave a little bit of space between the edges of the dashboard and the visuals themselves. That way it doesn't look cluttered like what we started with. And the KPIs are the most important, so I want these to stand out more. On the worksheet, I'm going to start by formatting the sales so that it's in millions. Then I'll format the profit so it's a dollar. This gives these measures instant context within our dashboard. I'll also format the headers so they're a little bit bigger and a little bit lighter. Then I'll center them. To remove the lines, I'll go to borders and choose none for the row divider. Then I'll use text within the marks to format our actual measures. I'll make the size bigger than the headers and make this tablet regular so it stands out more. Then for the alignment, I'm also going to choose centered. Small formatting tweaks can make a huge impact on how easily a dashboard is understood. And the last thing I'll do to improve readability is to format the title so the background is a different shade than the rest of the dashboard. That way it stands out and acts as a banner at the top of the dashboard. And if the text doesn't start where you want it, you can always edit the text and put some spaces before. That way you can control where the title starts. Without changing any of the data, we transformed a cluttered, hard-to-read dashboard into one that's clear and easy to interpret at a glance. A well-designed dashboard can be the difference between confusion and instant understanding. When you design with psychology in mind, your data doesn't just look better, it communicates better.